Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our next lesson in the modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're actually going to be talking about something that's not so modern. In fact, it's sort of been skipped in our table of contents of C++ lessons, and we're going to be going back and talking about functions. Well, the great thing about functions are is they're incredibly flexible. And one feature that I've omitted is this idea of default arguments that I think is important to know about just so you can see when it happens in code bases or think about how you can use this to your advantage for your actual long lived code. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and check out what default arguments are in C++. So I've gone to the CPP reference page and can go ahead and scroll down here. And if you go to the function section, you'll see category number two here. So right towards the start, we have default arguments and it really is as it states. It's this idea that we can just assign a value to our arguments. So if the user doesn't provide one, well, it'll have a default here. So I'd like to recreate this example here with point here, and we'll just play around and talk about it in this lesson. So with that said, let's go ahead over to our code here. And what I'll go ahead and do is, uh, oops, just a little extra copy and paste there. Uh, but I'll go ahead and create this function here for uh, point here. And let's go ahead and just provide three arguments here. And I'm going to do it x uh, and y here and then let's just go ahead and uh, print out what x is and then we'll go ahead and print out what y is and then let's, let's go ahead and just use this function here so point uh two seven here you want to give some different values here just so we have uh, some difference here and let's go ahead and compile this and just to go ahead and show you, this isn't anything really new in C++, so I can actually use old C++ 98 here, and I can compile and run this, and again, 2 and 7 show up here. Now, what would I do here if I only wanted to specify for some reason just one of these values? And I think a better use case for us might actually be to uh, define this in, say, two or three dimensions here, and let's just go ahead and add Z here. And I'm just going to assign that to zero by default here. So I'll go ahead and add in Z here. And again, you'll see I just specify two of the parameters for X and Y, and Z is defaulted to zero here. So again, I can go ahead and compile this, run it, and we'll get X, which is two, Y of seven, and Z, which is zero. Now, default arguments, again, are something that's been around for quite some time and are available in many different programming languages. And what it can do is provide us reasonable defaults. In fact, we've seen some of this reasonable defaults when we've looked at templates, if you've been following along in some of the series here, where we can provide some sort of default uh, allocator that's used in the example of vector, or just some default size for a container if we don't specify one of the parameters. Now, it is important to actually get the order right here, meaning that we can't specify the defaults as say uh, x and y and then have the user pass in uh, the other values here meaning i can't just go ahead and say well y is always going to be zero here uh, and then if i try to compile this it's going to get a little bit confused here because it doesn't know should i have assigned two to x and seven to z and y is zero or what's going on so we can only have the trailing type here or the trailing argument here be the actual default so that's just something to keep in mind here so let's go back in our code and correct this now again why to use defaults in your arguments it's probably going to be something that you would discuss with your team that you're working with i think there are some best practices that you can use for example in the case of if something must be initialized to make sure that the code is working so for example if you have a 3d system here uh, but sometimes you're working with 2d data maybe you just want to initialize z to zero because that's going to be common or sort of understood you want that to be pretty well documented however uh, for this actual behavior the other use case where I've seen people use defaults a lot is when they're extending old or legacy code and they want to actually add some other parameters here. So for example, let's say we're working on some library here and we actually want to expand this and we've got our int x, y, and z, but maybe we want actually another parameter here, w, but all of our code still needs to work on the assumption that we just have x and y here. And then of course we want X, Y, and Z. And then later I add this feature X, Y, Z, W. I don't necessarily have to do anything too wild here, or I don't have to create, for instance, some sort of uh, function here with a variable amount of parameters or a variadic uh, template here. Um, I can just sort of add something on the end here, give it a reasonable default that will function, or I can check for an error for, and sometimes that's okay. 
Now, that's just, again, one reason I've seen come up for why to use default arguments, again, for extending legacy code. And again, when you start to see lots of these parameters uh, line up, again, it can be useful to have reasonable defaults. It's a lot for a user to have to think about. Uh, and, you know, really, after you get to four or five arguments, I also would probably prefer to create something like a struct here and call it, you know, point options uh, and then pass in, uh, in this particular example, X, Y, Z, W. And then if there were, you know, more options here and just pass in this one structure. That's another way that you can make your code a little bit more resilient. I've talked about that previously in a video, uh, but just another idea here if your arguments really start to line up. But with that said, there's really not too much uh, else to know with this feature. You can use it for other things, like if they're member functions, uh, just the same way. Following the rules that we learned about before, just making sure that you have defaults only on the trailing types, and you can't have defaults uh, up front here. All right, folks, so with that said, that's just a short uh, lesson here, sort of covering our bases. It's something that's been around in the language a long time. It's available in many other languages other than C++, so I thought it would be useful for you to know about. And if you have any questions about that, feel free to comment below. And with that said, thanks for your time and attention, folks. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.